What's going on y'all? I got me a lovely package here from Amazon that just so happens to contain something from Lippert. That's right, this is the wire harness for the external sensor for the Lippert Ground Control 3.0. Should be 35 feet of wiring, supposedly coated in peanut oil for whatever reason they do. We can't find it yet, a logical reason. I haven't dug real deep. At any rate, this is a brand new wire harness. The first thing I'm gonna do, if you're new to the channel, you may be wondering what's the big deal with our open range RV. We've been having a lot of problems with our Lippert ground control 3.0 leveling system. The error is external sensor error. When that error goes off, it basically cripples the system. Occasionally, I can acknowledge it and go into manual mode, but the majority of the time it continually trips it, basically crippling the system, preventing me from leaving. I've had to do as worse, well, as simple as just unplugging this wire, like, like I just showed you from the main control board in the front storage area. I've, uh, to as drastic as I've had to raise up all the jacks, including extend the front jacks and lower them again with a drill just to get on the hitch so we could leave an RV park one day. That took about an hour and a half to two hours extra time. This has been an ongoing drama. This is almost a, the, the Lippert <laughs> soap opera. It's welcome to Lippert's Daily Soap Opera. We're gonna learn about drama from Lippert products. Yes, I'm, I'm, Lippert does a lot of great things and I hate to just drag everything they do through the mud, but this current situation is very frustrating. There is the potential that this is my fault and this could be related. If you look right here, you can actually see just the bottom of the frame right there. My ladder, which is a telescoping ladder, I used to shove that in the front storage bay and it is possible that I may have damaged these wires when doing that. So in that case, I'm gonna have to write a big, beautiful, love letter to Lippert apologizing for all the bad things I've said. But in the meantime, what I'm not retracting is that I don't like the touch screen. Every time I need to clear the air, I can't do it outside. I have to walk into the RV, up the stairs, right by my bedroom bathroom, and clear the air again. That part's getting annoying. Uh, the whole touch screen business is, it seems fancy and it seems cool because everybody's got a smartphone with a touch screen and they think that that's the way to go. I don't. I would like to bring some simplicity back to the situation. At any rate, what I want to do right now, everything right here where we're parked is all gravel. The rocks aren't the most jagged. I've been on worse, but if I'm going to have to rewire this thing, it's going to require cutting the belly of the RV. So before I even do that, what I want to try to do is see if at 35 feet, if I can run this cable just from the front outside down and I've got a cut because I've already replaced the external sensor. We've already done that step. So I know where it's at. So I could open that panel up there and then I could just try running it externally and see if I'm still getting the external sensor error. Of course, as I've already experienced, I've had days where the error doesn't go off at all. So that would be absolutely wonderful if I it's like, hey, it's great, everything's fine, and then I go through the work and I replace everything, cut open more of the belly to run this wire through there, only to have this air come back. Because the one thing that I've tried to get people to understand, including people at Lippert, is that it could be the main control board. It is within the realm of possibility that the actual connection and the wires on the actual computer board are having a problem and aren't reading correctly. But they all want to say, nope, if the control board's bad, it would be a different error. I'm an IT guy. I know how this electrical kind of stuff could be, something could be arcing between something on the control board. I've seen things happen. I have seen semiconductors on a motherboard on a computer catch on fire right before my eyes. I know things. So that's what we're gonna do first. I'm just gonna run this out and I'm just gonna see if 35 feet is long enough. This is a 41 foot RV, but the control board is not all the way at the front and the external sensor is not all the way at the back. So I'm thinking 35 feet might be enough. Join me, won't you? It's interesting, this is, when I open this up, it's wrapped in masking tape. 
shaped together. So this is the connector that goes into the main control board. There you go. That is what the three wires connect into the main control board with. And then this is what the external sensor itself and really all the sensors, there's a sensor on each jack that has a connection like this. It has a special kind of name. I want to say it was like Deutsch, Doubt, that kind of like how you, uh, how you define speaking German. That's what it looked like, like D-E-U-T-S-C-H, I believe. Here, you hold that in. No, just kidding. You hold that in. Put this around the, the camera. See, it's like you're really working here. It's all wrapped in this plastic, it's like a corrugated plastic sheathing. Seems like a good word to describe what, what I'm looking at here. My frustration with open range over this situation is that they don't make the underbelly easily serviceable. In fact, the entire RV in general, like the issues we've had with the furnace, it's just not easy to service it. So if I cut over, so I'm all the way here at the bay. Yeah, I think this would work. Doing my best not to damage those wires. Yeah, I think, honestly, I think I have probably about two to three feet to spare to run this test. All right, thanks for the help, you're a good helper. Since I've got the black stone out, I'm going to have to crawl through this way. So the, see where the spare tire is? You should be able to see maybe the Gorilla Tape where I've cut. So I'll have to crawl through this way, open that up, unplug the external sensor as it is now. Yeah, there's, there's plenty. See how loose this is, I pull this tighter. That'll give me plenty of room. Let's just do that right now. Yeah, I'm not too hip to it touching the stinky slinky, but biggest thing, the point of this test is just to see after, if I use this wire to plug it all in, do I then have no more external sensor error? All right, I plugged it up in the front just to save a little bit of space of having to go around this corner. I actually just pop this door open, use my spare diesel right here to, to hold that open. If you're familiar with open ranges, open range doesn't give you two 30 pound propane tanks. They give you three 20 pound. Two of the 20 pounds are hooked up on the other side. The third one was sitting here as just a spare. Well, I also have that 40 pounder sitting there in the middle as my spare. So I gave this one to my sister and I now keep five gallons of diesel on the same side as my tank. So if I ever run out and I can't make it to a fuel station with the RV hooked up, I now have my spare diesel here. All right, so you can see I've got the new wire running through here. I didn't want this door to accidentally slam shut so I twisted my diesel a little bit there so that'll keep the door from slamming. And now I'm gonna have to go crawl underneath here. This is the part where it gets a little painful. So these, I've been on worse rocks. I need to find that pool noodle. All right, here I go. So if you have to go crawling around underneath, pool noodles have done a great job for me. The first time I did this, my neck hurt for days from having to hold my neck up. So I like to take a pool noodle so when I'm like laying down doing whatever I'm doing, I can rest my, my head on that. Gorilla tape is a must if you're a do-it-yourselfer in the RV. If you hire a tech, guess what they're gonna use? Gorilla tape. They should almost call it the original or the uh, official, official tape of RV life. It is on there really good. I only made three cuts back here. There we go, I'm resting my head. I'm resting my head on the pool noodle. So I only made three cuts in the plastic when I cut this open. And what that does is that allows it to remain held up here by the front. So aerodynamically, the air will come over this flap. Okay. So the external sensor is right here. So ripped all this open. There's the external sensor right there. You can see the coupler. So I'm gonna disconnect that and then plug in my new cable. Now that external sensor that is in here is brand new. I replaced that while we were in Lake Conroe near Houston. Now an external sensor, according to Lippert's documentation, should be two to three feet behind 
the rear axle. And judging by the placement of my foot, off by about six inches to my chest, I think it's more like five feet. This is where Open Range officially put it. According to the Lippert people, Tanya went to a class and learned a lot. They said it could potentially be installed upside down. As you can see, if it were upside down, then this would be facing down. And they said if it was installed upside down, that it would never work. And that wasn't our problem. It has worked. As far as open range choosing to put it five feet behind the rear axle instead of three, well, if they're doing that on all the models and not everybody's having the problem I'm having, I don't think that's going to be the problem. Anyway, we've got the new wire looks to be firmly inserted. Here's the old wire up there. I'm going to crawl back out and we will try to auto level again and see what we get. The actual position of the, aside from the jack itself, as long as this wire doesn't get caught up in that jack moving, there shouldn't be any issue with where this wire is located. The only thing that's sensing anything is that sensor right there. All right, coming out. So I'm about to hit auto level. Before I do, I'm just double checking everything. I think the closest thing that could be a problem would be the hose right there. It should be fine. I made sure that my new wire isn't gonna get crunched. That jack's fine, there's nothing near that. I think the closest thing I've really got to a problem here these Christmas lights that I ran, but they are below that jack. Let's check out the Blackstone and make sure the Blackstone wouldn't be in the way. No, I think the axles and the tires would stop this from ever hitting the Blackstone. Because that actually isn't holding it up all that much, the, the jack right there. So that should be fine. That's just the information on its current setting. I think I'm a little too close. Fill out this button right there. So it's basically just rechecking everything. And I was worried actually, since we've been here, we had a couple of days with a lot of rain and I felt like the soil was so wet that we may have resettled slightly off. So I wanted to do this, but the entire time we've had the air. It's just rechecking everything, no errors yet. Success. But as long as this drama has been going on, it's off by just a little bit. I'm not sure why I can't quite get those numbers perfect. Okay, so far so good. So far we got, it, it successfully ran the test. No error after I changed out the wire. So probably is the wire. Like I said, if. It may have been my fault because I was shoving that ladder in there and where the wire comes from the computer and goes down and towards the back, mm -hmm. I may have been kind of making contact in that area, possibly crunching the wire. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that might have been the problem. Since I figured that that might be the problem, I have stopped putting the ladder in there. I put it in the back of the truck now. What I might do is maybe try to get some kind of a protector or something to go around that area. Rather, because all they had, open range had foam insulation sprayed around it. Terrific. Now it means crawling under the RV a bunch more and cutting open the belly. Huzzah! Huzzah! Know anybody that's been to Lippert uh, RV owner school that wants yes. to crawl around on their belly? I mean, no, in their back? Not me. <laughs> I didn't do that. Maybe I should call Jesse. I didn't take that class. Yes, Jesse and Marissa. Well, Marissa's kind of far away. Jesse's not that far. <laughs> Pretty sure she'd be like, oh yeah, I've got, uh, I've got a thing. Time to figure out what's next. All right, I've got everything taken out of this front compartment up here. 
you can see the where the new wires coming in I'm gonna have to start cutting zip ties come down here and look at this mess that's where it enters in towards the back I gotta clear all that out it's probably like this one right here looks like there's two two of the smaller ones and go back through there so I gotta clean all that out to start feeding the new cable through thanks open range you're the well, you're something. Thankfully, I've already prepared for this. I've already got some zip ties here that have the holes at the end. So I can literally, I just cut zip ties. Now all I got to do is unscrew them. It's like right there. I'll just leave that one there. And then when I'm done and I can bundle all these back up, I've got the replacement zip ties. And my problem wire came out. If you look... That almost looks the way that's crunched right there. It might have been done by the zip tie. Would not surprise me. So it's getting kind of late, so I'll probably have to wrap up here for today pretty soon. I've got a nice day tomorrow. So my frustration I'm having is getting the wire, the new wire, through the hole where all the other wires go through in here. It's a pretty small space to come through. This is the old wire, so what I'm thinking about doing is taping the new wire that's going to come into here through here. I've got enough slack to pull it through and try to get it safely through this hole right here. And that is the frustrating situation I'm at right now. I've done cable pulling jobs with ethernet cables in the past, and this is how we would do it. You can see I've got the new one taped to the old one there, but I don't like the tape. The tape, I'm having a problem. I need better tape. Not sure what to do about that, but that's, that's how we would pull cable. When you need a new ethernet cable run somewhere, you would tape your new cable to the old one, and then you would just pull the old one and get your new cable delivered. I went looking online for other videos where people have run wires through the underbelly from the front to the back and I'm not having any luck finding it. I reached out to my other friends that make RV YouTube videos so like, has anybody done this? Because I get the feeling like I'm going to be the first one and I don't want to be the first one. Might be the first one. Might have to take everything I learned from the daily vlog and chop it all up and put it into uh, an actual lesson video on how to run these cables through here. So the current situation I'm at, I've got it opened up down here and I can see where it comes through at that spot and then I can see it right here and then this is the drop frame and it goes up right there and it's all kind of loose right in this area. Crawling around and cutting back by the axles, it's gonna be even more of a claustrophobic situation. I'm scared of cutting water pipes, cutting black tanks and gray tanks and fresh tanks. Since open range didn't make it easy for these panels to come down, pretty much have to cut them. And that's just no fun. I'm sure the professional way would probably be take off all the propane lines, drill out all the rivets, take the whole thing down, put in new rivets, reconnect all the propane lines. That would probably be the official way. 
But this has pretty much become the standard these days. Gorilla tape. That was somebody else's. Man alive, that stuff was sticky. I have a cut on my thumb. That Gorilla tape, that old Gorilla tape was deteriorating the Band-Aid right off of my thumb. That Gorilla tape was basically eating it. Begs the question, when is Gorilla tape going to start making Band-Aids? Alright, I realize y'all didn't get to see all that as it was going down. I had to have Tawny come help. So that worked. Here's the taped up part. So that white end you see right there, that is the new, new wire harness. So we got that through the hole. It's a bit frustrating. It's like, how do you, we don't really know what damaged the old wire. How do we ensure our new wire, which cost a hundred dollars, doesn't get ruined. All right. There we go, that's gonna go up there. I have the, the end of it is right here. So I figured at least get that part done tonight as we're losing sunlight. Sorry, my back's hurting, it's trying to stand up. I shouldn't have any rain tonight, so. And now what I'll do is, since that hole was so tight, basically what I was worried about is I didn't think that this larger piece was gonna fit through there. So I needed, to get this through. Now that's the old one. What I'll do is pull this out onto the other side and then tape the rest of the new cable to this and work it, basically pulling it through its stations. Because what they did is they used the spray foam insulation like a glue. I witnessed that firsthand in this section right down here that they had basically just spray foamed insulation around it and be like there that's how we secured it to the j wrap this is called j wrap the bottom part that's why i just i have to cut it open in certain sections and see and i know for a fact that it's loose from here to there so then i need to cut open back in here see where it's loose there and then basically just make big enough holes that i can at least get in there and see it and keep on pulling it until i get it all the way to the back thinking this is going to be a all day job tomorrow it needs to be tomorrow because it's a rainy day on friday and saturday and travel day on sunday all right y'all this is where i'm going to leave it for today i've got the new piece is in the front compartment where it belongs run through this first wall and through one beam and then i went ahead and i don't know if you can see it dangling there see it hanging right there that is the new end that has to be run all the way to the back. I just kind of used a propane line that's down there to suspend it up in the air. So if we have any rain or anything, it won't get in there. Should be fine. And there's the old line right there. A little bit of separation. Basically, I think I need to run go get some more tape right now. So I'm prepared for tomorrow morning. So I can tape that up better and just kind of keep on feeding it through. Pulling it back. You see it right there? That's how far back I've got it. That's the old wire sticking out right there. And then tomorrow I'll have to cut open further back. Uh, <laughs> my head man looks silly. Yeah, once I start crawling around on my back, the hair starts getting in my eyes. Obviously everybody would be like, all the guys at least would be like, man, cut your hair. Cut your hair while you got that long hair. I want long hair. I got these headbands for when I would work out in the gym to keep the sweaty hair and sweat out of my eyes. And so it helps in these kind of instances, especially like when I'm doing black tank stuff. It's like, I can't be touching my face to move my hair out of my eyes. So put something like this on. This is, it's great stuff. Can't remember what it's called, Bondi? It's it called a Bondi. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna call it wraps. It's eight something. Hopefully I can get some better tape at the grocery store before they close at 10. Walmart's too far away. I'm not driving 14 miles just for some tape. Dollar General, maybe. Dollar General might be a good fit. Usually when I would do this kind of thing, I would use like the black electrical tape. When I'm running Cat5 or Cat6 ethernet cable through a wall, I would bond that real quick together. Old cable, new cable, and then could start pulling on the old cable and pull that new cable through. That's kind of the effect I'm trying to get here. So if I can get some electrical tape, that'd be great. Masking tape would be reasonable. 
the masking tape we have apparently was too exposed to the heat and elements and it's just kind of ruined so we don't have a good 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 thing to use right now tawny usually has blue painters tape but apparently she's out of that too so yeah i'm gonna go get some more of that right now just need to end the day the mosquitoes are starting to come out and bite me it's after eight o'clock sun is going down so thank you all so much for watching the next episode in this soap opera about the Lippert Ground Control 3.0 auto leveling system. Looks like it's the cables. Thank you so much for watching. Remember life happens even fixing things that are broken. Don't let it stop you. Stay fresh, cheese bags.